welcome to Tech to Tech presented by Kaizen, where we will explore common cleaning questions and answers. This session has been pre-recorded and will include additional FAQs related to this specific topic at the end of the presentation. We hope it is 15 minutes well spent. Let's get started. I would like to introduce Kaizen's own Chuck Sexton. Thank you, William, and hello, everyone. And thank you for joining my Tech to Tech presentation today. The topic of which is advanced wash bath analysis. What is your cleaning chemistry telling you? To start off with, I've broken cleaning chemistry into two main categories, aqueous and solvents. On the aqueous side, I split those up in by, generally by pH into acidic, neutral pH, and alkaline. The solvents, water immiscible or insoluble, and semi-aqueous, which is partially soluble solvents, and then the three fluorocarbons, uh, which make up most of, of uh, vapor decreasing today. If you want to learn more about any of these particular cleaning chemistries and their, uh, their operations, please uh, visit our Tech to Tech library for more in-depth analysis. Measurement of aqueous bath concentration. And I'll be talking about measuring the concentration and also the health or the condition of these baths. For, for aqueous baths, we measure conductivity, titration, refractive index, organic phase, and I've also shown pH here. Uh, one of the key methods we use is conductivity, where we relate the ability of a, a bath to transmit electricity measured in millisiemens to the concentration of the product, of the cleaning product. We use simple devices like this handheld uh, conductivity meter. I've shown on the right, very accurate, can be used in most cases. If there's very high, high ionic contaminant level, sometimes we can't use this method, but we always we look at it to see if it's available. Another method is refractive index. Here we measure the refractive index of the cleaning solution. Uh, the units are bricks, and we relate the bricks to percent concentration of the cleaning chemistry. Uh, we use these very simple handheld devices like the optical refractometer and a digital refractometer shown here. It's a pretty accurate method. There are times, again, when the contaminants interfere. Uh, contaminants, for example, water-soluble uh, solvents interfere with this measurement, and we determine that this is not the best method to use. Kind of the tried and true conventional method is titration. and Generally, we'll help a customer for two months or so, we'll measure the concentration by titration, and then we'll try one of these simpler methods. Uh, the, the titration methods involve either a dropper kit, which can be used on the plant floor, or a burette method, which sometimes is, but usually that's found in a laboratory. And then we relate the, the drops or the milliliters of titrant to the concentration uh, of the cleaning chemistry. Very accurate method. This slide addresses the bath condition, or what we're trying to do here is predict end of bath life. And one good and probably best, I think, method is the alkalinity ratio, where we titrate, like we did in the prior slide, down to a pH of 4, or 8.3, and then we titrate down to a pH of 4. So it's a double titration. We take the values of both of those titrations and create a ratio called an alkalinity ratio. And we re relate that to your particular process. And these are pretty accurate. We can usually do this measurement and determine when your bath is just about at its uh, end of life. Another method for uh, measuring aqueous bath concentration is the organic phase method. Some products, especially in the electronics world, uh, we're able to, to get a split of the organic phase by adding a reagent measuring that amount of split. And as you can see from the chart here on the left, re relating that volume to the concentration of cleaning chemistry, very accurate and it works for a great many products, not usually affected a lot by, uh, by contaminants. Okay, last and least uh, for measuring bath concentration. I, I've been at Kaizen 21 years and about once a month, I think I've gotten the question, uh, can I use pH to control my, my uh, or measure my, the, the concentration of our cleaning chemistry? And the answer almost always is no. And there's a couple of graphs I've shown of a typical acidic cleaner, 
typical alkaline cleaner, and you can see over about 1% concentration, the curve flattens out. So it's pH is not a good method. and We almost never recommend it for, for controlling or measuring bath concentration for cleaning products. NVR is a me another method of measuring bath condition or how close you are to end of life. Uh, this is a device which, which takes a sample, it, it weighs it, evaporates the uh, volatile portion, and what you're left with is a non-volatile portion, which is, you know, in most cases, it would be the flux. So it's a measurement of soil load. And we're able to identify you know, at what point with your process, you you reach two, you know, soil load that's so high that you stop cleaning well. For the solvent condition, and I and we're not talking about measuring solvent concentration because those are normally 100%. So these slides deal with the, measuring the condition of the solvent. Uh, we measure acidity, moisture, volatile solvent contamination, and NVR again. The, the acid level of the solvents is done by doing an extract with water and then measuring or doing a titration on that extract. And some solvents build up uh, acid primarily because of uh, the, the uh, contaminants that are being brought into the process, like acidic fluxes, for example. And you don't want to let the acid level get too high. We measure that we have uh, acid stabilizers called boosters that can be added as well to control acid buildup. Um, solvents generally have a problem when the moisture content reaches a certain level because the solubility parameters of the, of the solvent changes and often you'll stop cleaning well when the moisture gets too high. This is straightforward. Uh, again, uh, we have these instruments in our lab. Most of you probably do not. And you, as you're chemical supplier, we can help you for at least for the first couple of months and thereafter when needed to kind of stay on top of your process. Solvent, um, foreign solvent contamination is very important for many solvents. A lot of companies will do pre-cleaning in solvents like isopropanol, for example. Those solvents get into our cleaning solvent and contaminate it and sometimes change its ability to clean uh, the contaminants, for example, the flux from, from your components. Uh, we measure this by GC or gas chromatography. And we'll, like the, the chart on the left shows the virgin solvent, and the two on the right show different levels of foreign solvent buildup. And again, this is something we can help you stay on top of. And it is, it's important for, for uh, end of bath, uh, ben, bath life measurement. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we do NVR, non-volatile residue, for both aqueous and for solvents. Uh, this is this old tried and true ASTM method, and it uses a scale, a laboratory scale, and an oven where we're me measuring the weight of the contaminant, driving off the volatile portion of the contaminant, and then weighing what's left. And, and through a calculation, measuring the non-volatile residue. This is a really good measure of the solvent uh, condition and how close you are to end of bath. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work. It, I would say it works 80% of the time. There are times when when you reach a level where you've reached steady state and the concentration levels out and you're still cleaning. So finally, as far as the instrumentation for measurements go, we use an FTIR. All of the, the slides I've shown before measure the quantity or the amount of contaminant that's building up in your cleaning bath. Uh, this device measures the, uh, the or identifies the particular contaminants. So we'll get pure contaminants from our customers and match them up. And we're able to determine very accurately which particular contaminants are causing the problem on substrates and in the cleaning baths. In conclusion, you can, you can maintain a healthy cleaning process that's very efficient. Uh, if you stay on top of these methods uh, for measuring both concentration and condition of the bath for both the aqueous products and also for the different solvent products. Uh, finally, I have some frequently asked questions. Uh, how do you determine the bath life is near end of life? As your chemical supplier, we'll work with you using, again, these techniques that we have uh, to, to help you understand 
which technique is best and which which of these parameters is the best measure for determining when you're near the end of bath life. And we compare these parameters, these measured parameters, to the level of part or component cleanliness uh, that, that uh, we're seeing. What do you do if analytical methods do not predict end of bath life? Sometimes this is the case. And some of these techniques uh, will not give you a, a good determination Unfortunately, and when we do that, then we'll we'll monitor the cleanliness of the parts, and we'll base it on cycles or or number of parts cleaned or surface area cleaned, or we just put your bath on a particular you know time change out. You know, a saying in our industry is when in doubt, change it out, and we like to know exactly when we are in doubt. Uh, finally, what are the risks of uh, poor bath conditions? Well, number one, of course, is that your parts your cleanliness of your components will not be as good. Uh, secondly, if, if there are conditions of buildup like acid buildup, you can't actually attack uh, some, of the, some of the substrates that you're cleaning or some of the equipment that your, your uh, cleaning bath is being used in. That's my last slide and I will turn it over to Will. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks, Chuck. And thank you guys for watching this Tech to Tech session. If you'd like to discuss this topic further or have any questions not answered in the session, please contact your local Kaizen regional manager or send an email to tech, the number two tech at kaizen.com. And we will have someone follow up with you as soon as possible. Do you want to have exclusive access to future content sent directly to your inbox? Or do you know someone who would, who would benefit from these sessions? If the answer is yes, just go to tech to tech by kaizen.com and fill out the subscription form. And if you like this video, be sure to follow us on our social media platforms for more expert cleaning content.